southern chain of the Tongan Islands, life was settling into a routine. As was explained in the last episode, trouble with the mainsail, this episode picking up on the repairs. So you can see what I've done so far. It looks a bit rough and ready and that's exactly what it is. Uh, I'm not bothering doing it properly because uh, this is going to last hopefully one trip uh, and then the sail is done for because it's rotten. I'm sort of pursing the, it's like a pair of lips together. Uh, so I can go backwards and forwards through there. And I've come up with a plan. Um, this little tip here is a bulldog clip on there. will hold the, uh, the bit to be sewn uh, in the right position. Uh, I can then sew it through. So that's ideal. So I've got quite a bit more to do. It's a hell of a long bloody tear. Yeah. Got the big hat on today. Got my new sun hat on, this one kept burned. I tell you, another little tip is uh, if you're blind like I am uh, and you want to look cool, uh, put some trendy sunglasses over your uh, seeing eye glasses and people will just think you're so cool they'll never know that you're a, a blind old sea dog. Better get on with this before the wind gets up. It better hold, this sail has to uh, hold out now for uh, about another thousand miles. Then it's for the dumpster. Got some of this wonderful sail repair tape. Well, I say wonderful, I haven't used it yet. What happens is you peel the back off like that, uh, and then you're left with a sticky back tape that you put on the sail um, to reinforce the stitching. As I think I've said, this is not a permanent job, so no comments, please, about how badly I've done it. Remember, I'm in the middle of nowhere here using what materials I can to get the job done and just hoping and praying that this will last. Took a little break from work just to watch this guy for a moment or two. Oh, to be young again. You, look, you looked a little bit close to the reef back there. I met that couple the other night. They recognized me, uh, regular viewers of the videos. Uh, nice to meet them. Uh, he's from Wales, she's from England. It's a breezy old day here in the Anchorage. Quite a few boats have left over the last few days. I'm still here. I've got the old uh, wind turbine tied down because he was overworking for a bit. He's been working all night, he's having a rest now. As you can see from this shot, Shaddy's swinging around on the anchor. The wind never seemed to stop here. I don't know why, but every day was a windy day. Decided to do some work on this baby one more time. The Topper Hopper Hatsu again giving trouble. This thing was a bane of my life. I thought it was dirty fuel or uh, water in the fuel. I'm not so sure now. So I've drained her off. Uh, gonna refuel her and uh, start again, see what I get. Because we're expecting a lumpy ride down into New Zealand, uh, I've got the uh, storm mainsail out. Uh, so I want to try that up the mast just to see what it looks like and see what ropes I need to rig it up with. But it's a tad too windy to run anything up the mast today. Counted eight boats in the Anchorage this morning. There were 24 or more uh, a few days ago. That's the uh, starboard side snubber rope, uh, which is connected to the chain, which is way down there somewhere. That's, that's tight as a drum at the moment. But enough chit chat. I've got to get that damn thing working again. Believe me, I can't wait to ditch that thing and get a new engine when I get down to New Zealand. I think it's just about had its day. Yeah, not only that, I'm, I'm losing my patience with it. 
Still got water to fill up and got a couple of guys up here waiting for diesel to be put in them. Things to be done before I leave still. Also, it's video upload day. The work continues. Uh, that uh, tablet is acting as a hotspot and you can't see it, but down there is the computer that's uh, hooked into it and is hopefully putting a video online. The internet is coming from somewhere over there on the mainland. For some reason over the last two weeks, it's been incredibly slow. It's been 40 minutes and I've only uploaded 5%. This is gonna be a long upload. At this point, all the work on the boat had to be scheduled between the constant rain showers. So when it wasn't raining, it was on with the work once again on the top of Pahatsu. Not much success, so I thought I'd try my second engine. I got a Yamaha. Thought I'd put that on the boat and see how we went with that one. As you can see from this, the Topa Hapahatsu is a very, very heavy engine. For its two and a half horsepower, it's definitely overweight and is a pain in the ass to get back on the rail and secured. But it wasn't that engine alone causing problems. The Yamaha also had its problems. It had an external tank and the connection uh, decided it was going to break on me. Uh, when I tried to rig it up. So there again, another problem. What do I do about that? Hey, there's always a way around these things and I eventually got to put the dinghy in the water. Been having a few nights out with friends lately and I thought it'd be, make a change to stay in. So uh, I'm chillaxing, I've got a beer going. I've got my uh, wife beater vest on, uh, so I'm going to make some food and that uh, is a problem because I don't have much on board. So what I thought I'd do is I'd try and uh, eat something I haven't done before. At one time I had an awful lot of food under the floor here, um, but not so much now. But I do have some old cans of this and that, so I thought I need to use them up. The thing is, I need to use up some of the old food supplies. Some of it is getting a bit old, like this rusty old can of vegetables here. And next to it, I found this. It's a can, <laughs> I think it says sprouts on there. I don't know, I can't read my own handwriting. So it's gonna be a bit of surprise as to what I actually eat tonight. So what are we actually having tonight? Well, yes, that is uh, mixed vegetables, looks fine. And this is the mystery can. I've actually no idea, I've not rehearsed this, I've no idea what's in this. Oh, it's bean sprouts. Oh, right, well, that won't really go <laughs> with the other can. Oh, okay, um, all right, <laughs> maybe I won't have that then. I don't know, I like bean, bean sprouts, but I don't think they will go with um, that. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was Brussels sprouts. So take one pan, put in the vegetable mix, put in a stock cube. I've used a chicken one, but you can use anything you like. Um, and a whole handful of oregano. Some would know that as oregano. Oregano is in there, that provides the mm, uh, mm. And then we're gonna put some flour in there to thicken the whole thing up. I'm mixing it all up now uh, while it's cold, because uh, otherwise the flour sort of congeals. Um, I basically learned this. Uh, from a student. <laughs> Apparently students eat like this when they've no money. And to go with it is some instant mashed potato. Yuck. Mm-mm. Yeah. Well, maybe that wasn't such a good idea after all. And then the rain came back, big style. Well, the dinghy was full of water and there's only one thing you can do with a dinghy full of water, and that's your laundry. Later on, I had the opportunity to go on a friend's boat and take this wonderful shot of Shaddy. There she is in the middle of the picture, just swinging lazily at anchor. Talking of lazily, it was time for me to have some me time. Just me and a hammock.
Well, that's quite enough of that nonsense. Time to get myself up, stop lazing around. Went into town, decided to do some shopping, looking for some clothing. They got some great t-shirts, but everything was Tongan size. Don't mean any disrespect, but the Tongans are big people, and all the clothes sizes are rather big. This is a traditional dress. It's basically a mat that's wrapped round the body. The story goes that fishermen in the olden times used to go to sea naked and on returning to shore they'd take the sails down and wrap them round themselves. Wherever you go in Tonga, lunch is not a problem. I love chicken and in Tonga they love their chicken. There's always some place you could find this going on. Yummy. It's a lovely warm day outside today so we brought the vegetables down below, uh, keep them cooler. And there's a few more on deck here, uh, out of the sun. I'm trying to keep myself healthy at the moment. I'm gonna need the strength. Still lots of things to do on the boat before I leave for New Zealand. Got the uh, old four horse Yamaha on the back of Tiny Shaddy and uh, he's working really, really well. Uh, meanwhile, the Topper Hopper Hopper Hatsu is up here in disgrace and in retirement. As you may well know, if you've been watching the videos, my mainsail is just about shot and so is most of the canvas work on the boat. Going to get a little bit techy for you now. Uh, if you look at the mast, taking a close look at the mast, you can see there are two tracks uh, for the mainsail. In fact, the one on the left is for the mainsail. The other one on the right is for a storm sail, uh, a separate track. At the bottom of the mast you can see it comes down just here. Uh, the idea being that you can have a storm sail set up while the main sail is still in its track because you have an extra uh, track here. So um, I'm going to get the storm sail out and see what it looks like. Uh, it's a little bit windy to uh, try this but uh, let's have a look. And this is her, my storm mainsail. Uh, these are the cars that go up the track. The sail itself is basically a, a tri-sail made out of heavy material. Uses the same halyard as the mainsail. And you can see here, I'm having quite a problem. The weather is quite windy at the moment. Nothing like it would be in a real storm, but obviously it makes it a little difficult to get on. So could you imagine doing that in a storm? That's, these are hard to get on, I tell you. Um, yeah. Well, what the idea is they're going to rig it up and then bring it down to the bottom here and bundle it up, cover it up and secure it. So if I need to, I can put the main halyard actually onto this and lift it up quickly. That's the theory. Okay, this is gorilla filming at its best because it's blowing quite long and I, I've got it all rigged up. I'm going to haul it up. I've done it a few times. It's not rigged properly, so don't comment about how it badly it's rigged but this will give you an idea of what it'll look like that back end's going to be pulled taut I can't do it today I'll try Better get it down before I damage something. Oh shit. Come down, come down, come down. Don't want to rip my storm sail. No. After fighting with my storm sail, I went ashore. Uh, some friends had left a care package for me here at the uh, yacht clearance office. I wasn't sure what was in it. Uh, they'd already left and said that they left the box for me in the office. I didn't realize it was actually a public holiday. So when I phoned the uh, customs uh, uh, guy up to come and let me in the office, he wasn't too happy about it. Nevertheless, he did turn up, opened the door and then exclaimed that nobody had actually ever been to see him or had left a box uh, for me in the office. And I had a look around and there was nothing there. So I didn't quite know what to say about that. Uh, I thanked the guy and off he went. So uh, these things happen sometimes. You can't say anything about it. You just uh, have to roll with it. Decided to go off and do something else. Thought I'd take a walk around the industrial port. It's a heckish big place, I tell you. 
A lot of money's gone into it and very little actually goes on here. Um, kind of strange, a lot of investments but have never actually paid off. But round the back was something I wanted to take a look at. I'd seen it from a distance, this boat, and I spoke to a local who was there, uh, had been left by somebody years before. It actually been through a hurricane here in the port. It was kind of resting on the rocks, but still afloat. Uh, very strange, it's, there was a lot of stuff still on it. I'd normally expect something like this to have been completely stripped by locals or whoever else uh, fancy taking stuff, but this was uh, pretty much complete. On the way back, um, I've already told you about the strange mats that these guys wear in Tonga, but this fella really uh, took the prize. He was head to toe in this strange looking mat that was wrapped right round him. After that, went back to the island where Big Mama's uh, anchorage is, saw this. I thought, what the heck is that? Had to go and have a look. It was some kind of landing craft, although this was bigger than a landing craft. It was like a landing ship. And I thought, heck, you know, have we been invaded? What's going on? Are these pirates? But no, it actually was a school trip. Indeed, a real school trip. A local school back on the mainland had chartered this ship to bring the kids over to the island for the day. I mean, can you imagine back in your school days if your teacher had said to you, uh, would you like to go on a school trip to a tropical island? And by the way, we're getting there by landing craft. <laughs> yes. Anyway, as they uh, came off the ship, I decided I wanted to stay well away from that crowd. So headed back to the bar. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too early in the day. Although the sun was setting, there was no one around, so we decided to head back to the Shadmeister. Thank you so much for watching, and if you don't want to miss an episode, don't forget to turn on the notifications for my channel. It's next to the subscribe button, a little bell thing. Press that, and you'll never miss an episode. Having a few nights out lately. I lately, lately, lately. Better suppose can't buy customer. I don't go. I don't go. I don't go.